My name is Olivia Campbell Anderson, and I'm Executive Director of Renewable Energy Vermont. Uh, on this gorgeous sunny day, um, for some of us, winter might be the farthest thing from our minds. However, a lot of Vermonters are thinking and getting ready and preparing for next winter already. And as we've got 4th of July coming up, uh, we're also thinking about our independence from fossil fuels. And um, so we're here today to celebrate the fact that there are new sales tax incentive taking effect July 1. Uh, other new incentives that we're going to go into detail talking about. 80% of Vermont's heating comes from oil and gas. Uh, and we are working at Renewable Energy Vermont with a collaborative of folks to stabilize and reduce heating costs uh, with renewable solutions like advanced wood heating. Uh, because 78 cents of every dollar spent on fossil fuels leaves our economy. Instead of sending, you know, more than $131 million every year out of our state and exacerbating climate change, we could be reinvesting 70 million every year where we have nearly every dollar staying in our local economy with renewable wood heating, displacing 40 million gallons of fossil fuels. Um, over the next seven years, Vermont needs to install just under uh, 40,000 new uh, clean wood heating systems to meet our renewable energy and climate commitments. And to date, we've installed fewer than 400 on the boiler side for advanced wood systems. So we've got a lot of work to do and we are thankful to share the benefits that advanced wood heating brings to Vermonters to help make their homes more comfortable, lower their heating costs and uh, support our local economy and our forest landscape. So, which is why we are here uh, to announce the new incentives and the sales tax exemption, which would not be possible were it not for the advocacy and work of several senators and delegate and representatives, including one of whom is with us today, um, Senator Anthony Polina, who represents Washington County and also serves on the Senate Agricultural Committee and the Senate Finance Committee. And so um, Senator Polina is going to join us and talk a little bit about some of the good work that the legislature did to help Vermonters access more uh, renewable heating this year for the next few years. Senator, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate your patience. I just realized recently how connected everything is to your lower back when it comes to. There are people here today who can speak, I think, better to the actual issues around the technology and the efficiency of advanced wood heat systems. But I just want to make clear how important it is not only to homeowners and businesses, but to our local rural economy. We're not just here to encourage the use of wood boilers, advanced wood boilers, and to encourage a more efficient way of heating our homes and businesses. But, but what we're doing here today is we're encouraging more of our vitality to our rural communities and our local rural, rural economy. Right now, what we're doing by advancing wood heat boilers is we're creating a market for what we think of as low-grade lumber. This is wood that is, comes from Vermont forests and normally would have been going to paper production. Those markets have recently dried up over the last couple of years. A lot of that wood was going to Maine to be going to paper plants, which have shut down. So now that it's a resource that essentially is going to waste and not doing anything economically for our rural communities. By advancing the use of wood heat, advanced wood heat boilers, we're actually creating a market for that low-grade lumber, which then creates some better, better jobs for loggers and people who work in the woods. And it allows us to strengthen our rural economy. So we're not just talking about more efficient heating systems. We're talking about something that's really good for our rural economy for our forest products industry and for all Vermonters. So I just want to make sure that that's really clear, that that's one of the reasons, not the only reason, but that's one of the reasons why it was important to myself and others on the Agriculture Committee to push forward with this in the face of some pretty strong opposition. This was not a time when people wanted to spend money. There was a lot of questions about the sales tax exemption, whether it was the right thing to do, whether we could afford to do it. And we really made the argument that we couldn't afford not to do it because of the importance that it would put on our rural economy particularly at a time when we're trying to do everything we can 
to support our logging and forestry industries. This is one of the things we can do, which again is, would help both homeowners' businesses, but also be good for our rural economy, our forestry, our loggers, and our rural communities. So I appreciate everybody being here, and I just want to make it really clear that this is an economic development initiative as well as a renewable energy heating initiative. Thank you. Um, you know, and Susan Clark has been uh, not only powering her electric home with uh, solar, as you can see here, but also using um, wood and advanced wood heating for several years now, and is going to share her experience uh, about that. Susan, sure. <coughs> Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming all the way to my house. <laughs> um, and. Um, I, uh, you know, I agree with everything that's been said here about um, energy independence, um, about supporting my neighbors who are loggers and foresters and helping the rural economies, um, helping our communities. Um, but I guess the perspective that I would bring is um, as a person who actually heats with a wood boiler. Um, and <clears throat> I have to say, I, I heated with regular wood, you know, like kind of carry in like this into your house for about 15 years um, <clears throat> here and at another house. Um, and, um, and it's great, it's great heating with wood. You know, um, everybody knows how terrific it is. It is a lot of trips out to the wood pile and there's a lot of like detritus that comes on your carpet and there's that dust and there's the <laughs> fact that when you stand next to your wood stove, you're warm, but if you go in your living room, you're cold. And you know, I mean, <laughs> there, there are some downsides to the heating with wood that I'm sure so, some of you are aware of, but I loved it, I loved it. Um, but it didn't make sense for this house. And when our oil furnace went out, we had to um, replace it with something. And we did a lot of research. And this just made total sense for us. It has all the advantages of oil in that a truck comes to your house twice a year and plugs into your house and you've got fuel. Um, and when you're cold, you turn on the thermostat. So from a selfish point of view, it's really easy. It's really easy to, to heat um, with, with wood pellets. Um, and in addition, I feel really good about the sustainability um, and, the, uh, and what it can do for you know, using local fuels. So um, I, I really appreciate it. And I'm, I feel really glad to know that there are now um, ways that people can do this in their homes that make it even more affordable, um, which, is, which I hope means that more, more folks do it, because I, um, I, I think it works really well. Thanks. You know, one thing I would, I would mention, given what Susan said about the deliveries, is at some point, if we continue to move in this direction, we will actually see the development of wood pellet production plants in the state of Vermont which is something that we sorely need to create that market for the low-grade lumber. So we'd like to see pellets being produced here in the state of Vermont more so that we could use more of that low-grade lumber. Yeah. And um, we are excited to be partnering with Efficiency Vermont, who is are now offering some new incentives for customers to lower uh, their expenses and costs. And Karen Glitman from Efficiency Vermont is going to talk a little bit about some of their work. Thank you. Thank you, and it's a pleasure to be here and join in this celebration of modern wood heat. Uh, Efficiency Vermont is really excited and are thankful to our forward-looking regulators at the Public Service Department and at the Public Utility Commission who changed the rules to enable Efficiency Vermont to provide more incentives for modern wood heat. We will be offering a $3,000 incentive uh, for advanced wood heat uh, furnaces and boilers. Uh, we're also going to continue to work with uh, Renewable Energy Vermont and with the contractors on uh, large commercial 5,000 square feet or larger buildings with technical assistance, supporting our contractors to uh, provide uh, renewable wood heat there as well. So we know that advanced wood heat is good for the economy. We heard Senator Polina talk about it. It's good for the forest. It's good for all the critters that live in the forest. And it's also part of how we are going to meet our energy and climate commitments in this state. So we're excited to be part of this. Uh, we're delighted to be able to offer additional incentives and to continue providing technical assistance to homeowners and businesses who want to take advantage of this local renewable resource uh, to heat their buildings. So thank you. Thanks, Karen. Um, and there, so there in Vermont, there are more than a dozen, uh, nearly two dozen um, contractors and different local businesses that you can connect with to uh, get an advanced wood heating system. 
Uh, one of them is going to speak with us today, Andy Bhutan from Pellergy. Andy, you want to talk a little bit about sure. your customers and how you help folks? So, uh, Andy Bhutan from Pellergy. I'm, I'm the founder and general manager of Pellergy. We started about 12 years ago in this uh, wood pellet heating business. And we started out as a manufacturer, and as technologies uh, improved and changed and wood heating got more automated, uh, we've become an importer of technology. Um, we now uh, distribute uh, wood pellet boilers from right here in Montpelier, Vermont, uh, to about 13 states uh, as far away as uh, Alaska, uh, Washington, Oregon, um, and pretty much the entire Northeast. Uh, so we're, we're a Montpelier, Vermont-based business. Uh, we, we import boilers, we train technicians, and we work with um, you know, feedback from homeowners and from businesses to really uh, ensure that this automated, advanced, modern wood heat technology is the best that it can be and, and the most uh, reliable and um, easy uh, for, for homeowners and individuals. Um, in a home like this, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can expect anywhere from two to three deliveries per year, not unlike oil. Um, you turn the thermostat up and you've got good central heat throughout the house uh, with a renewable technology. Uh, to Senator Polina's point, and we, you know, we thank him very much for, for kind of taking a leadership role in this, um, this is about the local economy as well. Uh, not only are we a local business and a local uh, distributor of the technology, uh, but right now there are you know, hundreds of foresters out in the woods working on a day like today, um, harvesting this low grade timber, bringing it into places like Vermont wood pellet down in North Clarendon where we're producing pellets, New England wood pellet, Kern pellet, all within this local woodshed. Um, you know, and I, I, I reflect back on comments made uh, by Mike Snyder, who is our commissioner of forests and parks here, who said that you know, having a, a, a robust forest economy uh, means healthy forests and you, you can't have one or the other. You have to have a robust forest economy in order to have a, a, a good uh, healthy forest and, and, and that's, that's part of uh, finding a, a market for these low-grade timbers. Um, so we're both you know, focused on the technology end, we're focused on the ease for the homeowner and uh, you know, this, this modern wood heat is, is not bringing in logs and, and, and stoking a fire four or five times a day. It's, it's truly, you know, thinking about it maybe three or four times a season. Um, and, and other than that, it's, it's fully automated. Uh, with that, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions at all or, or you know, kind of a, a panel here if that's, if that's appropriate. Sure, sure. Well, actually, let's maybe do a quick summary for all sure. of the customer incentives and then we can move into questions. So starting July 1, Vermonters um, will pay no sales tax on a new advanced wood boiler. Thanks to Senator Polina and his colleagues, Senator Starr, um, Representative Helm, many others in the legislature that were involved in that. They can receive a $3,000 off the system from Efficiency Vermont. They can receive another $3,000 off the system from the Clean Energy Development Fund. Um, Andy is here uh, and can answer questions about that. And uh, for folks that are in Washington Electric Co-ops District, they can get another $1,000 off. So uh, other utilities, they may have specialized um, programs and I would encourage you to contact them and request that. Um, so ultimately you're looking at a total of seven to nine thousand dollars off a new boiler you're looking at stable fuel prices that you can rely on local fuels you know local heating very much uh, is similar to local eating and uh, there's no reason now that uh, we shouldn't all be thinking about and actually making the switch. There's no better time than today. So I also want to take a moment and recognize, um, as I mentioned, uh, there are dozens of companies in the state. Um, look for folks who are Renewable Energy Vermont members, folks who are a part of Efficiency Vermont's um, energy uh, excellence network. Um, and uh, we also have here Jay Frank from Sunwood Biomass, who installed the system in Susan's home. Um, Cutting Edge Energy Systems is here, and um, Bourne's Energy, both providing the systems and all of your local fuel needs. Uh, and 
you can find um, the contact information for these local businesses as well as others that are not here today on our website, which is revermont.org. We have a renewable energy business listing and you can find someone uh, near you to help you get one of these systems. So with that, let's any questions that uh, folks have about the systems or about the incentives? How would you characterize that goal uh, of 40,000 systems over the next, would you say seven years? Is that a, do you think you're gonna meet that goal or is that like a, a pie in the sky kind of thing? How, if we're only at 1% now, it seems like there's a lot of work to do. Yeah, there is a lot of work to do, and um, and what we know is sort of goals without plans and dreams are goals without plans uh, and actions are just you know dreams. So that's one of the reasons why uh, Rev uh, pulled together a five-year action plan on what are the different steps that are needed to accomplish that commitment that the state has uh, that we all share. And um, we're really thankful that um, the streamlining incentives uh, where you have, you know, you'll have one form or an identical form for to get the customer incentive for Efficiency Vermont and Clean Energy Development Fund. Um, that's one check off our plan. The sales tax exemption for the next three years, another check off. Um, and uh, we also have other folks that are working um, through the Statewood Energy team. Emma's here on education and customer um, knowledge. So there is a, a plan towards this. It's accomplishable. The technology's here. Um, the state, uh, the legislature is supporting us. Um, if our utilities, Efficiency Vermont, supporting Vermonters to help get them there. And so if we, if we keep sharing the good news about what c Wood can do for folks um, and keep these uh, incentives to overcome any barriers, we, we can get there. It's a lot of work to do though, um, but the benefits will certainly be worth it. So cost was the biggest barrier? Uh, yeah, what we see is, you know, advanced wood heating systems are a little bit more expensive uh, than your traditional oil or gas uh, boiler. And that's, you know, typically because think about how long that technology has been around. Um, this uh, technology, advanced wood heating is extremely uh, efficient. Uh, automated and easy and so that's why we're not talking about your grandfather's uh, outdoor wood boiler your grandfather's wood stove um, and and so it's here now it's been here for several years but we just need to do a little more to overcome uh, help Vermonters with that higher upfront cost may have a, a little more upfront cost which we're addressing with these incentives and cost reduction measures um, but you also have lifetime savings particularly on fuel uh, over time of the system. Do these new incentives make the upfront costs actually cheaper than a gas boiler? Or just comparable? Or where, where, do, where do these incentives bring it in comparison to a, a quote, traditional system? I, I, I could speak that a little bit. Uh, so so we, we've we just been involved in a quote where we're looking at uh, an old turn of the century farmhouse that has some weatherization uh, done to it. Their current oil heating system is 30 years old and they're looking at options. Um, with after incentives, uh, which included the sales tax exemption, we came within $500 on a $20,000, you know, brand new heating system job. Um, so, so that's that's really uh, a first for us that 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 our systems, our our advanced wood heat systems, are actually now, you know, seeing some parity uh, from a cost basis, and it's it's important to point out that, um, you know, solar was here years ago as well. Uh, and these types of incentives, they really boost uh, a marketplace, they boost a sector. And once that sector hits a, a level of sustainability, meaning um, numbers, then we see those costs come down. Um, and and so it's, it's, it's not one of these situations where we anticipate incentives to last forever. It's really, it's really that. It's incentivizing a marketplace to get its feet under it, to really build momentum uh, and then much like the solar industry, we see those incentives fall off as uh, as the quantities of systems come up and the prices come down. So but you also see the advantage of having a more stable fuel cost. Absolutely. Uh, fuel cost uh, st savings over over the last 30 years of, of fuel pricing uh, indices and, and, and tracking, what we see with wood pellets are that they, 
they really track inflation uh, as far as uh, price price increases. Whereas we know the volatility volatility in the oil and gas market is really you know incredibly up and down, and that's why we see a lot of um, uh, affordable housing developers you know switching to to uh, modern wood heat as well uh, because they have that predictability in their in their heating costs and the fuel prices. I can just add that when we put in our system six years ago, we had to think about it because um, there, the upfront costs were, were higher than putting in an oil furnace. Um, but we did the projections, we did the math and realized this is going to come out even in the end. Um, you know, when, when, uh, when, you, when you look at the life of the system. So it actually made a lot of sense then. With these incentives, it's a no-brainer. You don't, <laughs> it feels to me as if, wow, if we'd had these incentives, okay, we didn't, but I'm glad everybody else did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and the, the point about the incentives and all of these market elements is really to catalyze the market. And this is about finding a way to turn this market on so that it can get that that leverage so that we can see those costs come down, we can bring that parity, make sure that Vermonters actually have real choices. And that's what this is about. And also have the ability to, to make investments. When you talk about the goal, it's an ambitious goal. And sometimes we don't meet our goals in Vermont because we talk a good game, but we're not willing to make the investment that it takes to actually develop an industry or a product. And what this is going to do is allow people on their own, homeowners and businesses, to actually make the investment that's necessary in this industry to allow it to grow. And I think that's really important that we're encouraging that kind of direct investment in the new technology. Um, so I've had I've spoken with a number of people about uh, the concept of um, advanced wood heat, and uh, the pushback that I get is, you know, well, do we have enough trees? Is there enough? Can we do it here in Vermont? And I was just wondering if there's somebody who could address that issue um, in a way that I can then share it with my audience. You, you know, so, so we we are. Um... <clears throat> Uh, fortunate to have someone in the in, in out in the audience today, which I would actually welcome Emma up if she would like to um, brave the sunshine without her glasses and and, and speak that. I'd, I'd be delighted. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe an introduction and then yeah, tell us who you are. I'm Emma Hanson. I'm the Wood Energy Coordinator. I work for the Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation. And the answer to your question is yes. So Vermont is currently harvesting a little bit less than half the net growth in our forest, meaning we could harvest twice the number of trees and still maintain the same forest footprint. <laughs> and, and, and what that would equate to in wood energy, um, it, it would, would truly be enough to heat about 80% of Vermont's spaces uh, throughout the state uh, if we just hit those, those harvest goals. So. And create a lot of jobs. Exactly. Indeed. And keep our forests as forests. And keep the profits, instead of profits going to multinational corporations and the Exxons of the world, the profits are going to stay here with the local foresters and wood loggers. Mm -hmm. When you put it like that, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a no-brainer. You know, a lot of our forest tracks and a lot of our, our family farms are going through switchover, you know, generational uh, changes. And a part of keeping forests as forests, as, as Emma stated, is, is maintaining value uh, of that land to the, to the landowner, to the landholder, to the, to the homeowner. Um, you know, we, we've, had, we've had some personal experiences uh, within the family uh, regarding, you know, large multi-hundred acre uh, farms. And you do need to get creative with conservation, uh, with, with forest management techniques. Um, and a big piece of that is really having a market for the low grade timber. Um, it makes it uh, a profitable venture to to follow a forest management plan when there's when there's a market for the low grade timber. If there is no market, uh, either in wood pellet or or in the paper industry, which is, has really seen a, a decline in the past few years, um, it, it makes it very difficult to get in and, and follow a forest management plan. Um, so so th it's another another aspect of really keeping our forests as forests and not having them turn over to development. Any final questions? Yeah, I was wondering, um, one of you had mentioned using these advanced wood, wood heating systems in affordable housing areas. I was just curious if this technology is something that's feasible in multifamily homes or you know apartment mm -hmm. buildings. Yeah. Maybe since I live so, in an apartment. So <laughs> absolutely. Um, there are multiple examples. Actually, Vermont 
leads the way in multifamily. Uh, so, so in two areas, Vermont leads the way in multifamily uh, housing heated with, with advanced wood heat, but also affordable housing uh, development heated with wood heat. Uh, thanks in part to organizations like Housing Vermont uh, and Capstone who really have looked at uh, the economics as well as the local marketplaces for this technology. Um, you know, we have systems in multifamily, you know, mixed use uh, buildings where, uh, you know, it, it's uh, even historic buildings, downtown historic buildings. There's a new development in Manchester, Vermont, that's a 15,000 square foot building with a, you know, a restaurant, two restaurants, retail space, four condominiums uh, above, uh, all, all metered uh, through uh, heat metering uh, off a central, you know, wood pellet heating system. And that's becoming more and more. Uh, you know, realistic and, and uh, more than norm as well for, for large contractors to come in and, and do, uh, do systems. In fact, uh, we, we, we did host an event uh, down in, on Barry Street in Montpelier at one of the um, uh, multi-unit uh, facilities down there that's heated with a, with a wood pellet system as well. And it's not just multi-family units, but it's also larger I don't know what to call it, commercial uses. One of the best examples is schools. There's a lot of schools in Vermont that are already using wood heat, and this would encourage them to do more of it. So I think that, that we know it, we, it can certainly be used for larger projects as well. It's important to look at it that way. All right. Well, um, Sus, if there are any reporters who need to uh, see a system for B-roll purposes, um, uh, Susan has offered that they could do that. We're all not going to have the joy of going down into her basement. Um, Tight shots only. Yes. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, and feel free if you have any other questions to reach out to us or any of the uh, folks in the audience. A lot of expertise here today. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.